Bain, the Honourable Member for the Western Arctic. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and uh, just uh, I'd like to uh, start off by saying I support this motion. What's not to support? It's symbolism. Of course, symbolism is important in this country. It's important to understand how symbolism can make a difference for Canadians and for others across the world. This is an easy thing for the government to do. What was more, is a little more difficult, but what I still feel would be more appropriate is my motion 110, which calls to amend the motto of Canada so there are references to all three oceans. This type of step taken by uh, this parliament would be a clear indication that this, the symbolism that we're putting forward is intrinsic to our, to our, uh, to, to the essence of our Canadian state, and would have carry much, much more weight in uh, uh, in everything that we do. Well, that doesn't exclude the need for us to establish boundaries, but including a third C in our in our model is a clear indication of our our Canada includes the Arctic. Perhaps uh, the honourable member from Prince Edward Hastings will ask is the Prime Minister whether he will decide whether my motion is worth supporting. The Liberal leader has come out in favor of it. Uh, on May 12, 2009, I hand-delivered a letter to the Prime Minister's office suggesting because of his interest in Arctic sovereignty, he would be willing to throw his support behind changing the motto. Unfortunately, I haven't even had a letter back acknowledging the receipt of that letter. Mr. Speaker, symbolism is important. However, the people of the North want more than symbolism because people of the North, in occupying the North, create more sovereignty than anything else that we can do. Recently, the Standing Committee on Finance held a pre-budget session in Yellowknife. Here are the, some of the things that Northerners think should be done. Devolution. The North doesn't control its resources. Northerners do not control their resources like every other area of the country. Decisions made about resources can be made better by the people of the North with the understanding of how to develop the North. With their interests coming first, their interests will drive Canadian interests. Their interest in building roads and proper transportation systems and strong communities will trump anyone else in doing that work. So what we need to see is that this government moves towards devolution of the resources in the Northwest Territories, control over the land and resources. Proper funding of government's programs and services was brought up very strongly. The current territorial financing formula set three years ago did show an increase, but it didn't tie the level of funding to the actual cost of delivering services across the North. Over the, the last number of years, we've seen a market increase in the only energy form that is commonly used throughout the North, that is uh, uh, diesel fuel, home heating oil. Those prices have gone through the roof, and, and every territorial government, whether it's in the Yukon, Northwest Territories, or Nunavut, has to bear that cost. We need to see a better formula yet. We need to see a formula that really does take into account the cost of delivering services. As we progress with resource development, as we find ways to bring more revenue to Canada, that will help the situation. But without that, what are we in? The Northwest Territories, over the last number of years, has the highest GDP per capita in the country for any jurisdiction. Yet, what happened to our population last year in the Northwest Territories? It declined. It declined, Mr. Speaker. Why did it decline? Because the cost of doing of services in the Northwest Territories is so high, the cost of living is so high there, that people simply can't afford to continue their lifestyle in the Northwest Territories, in the Yukon, and especially in Nunavut. I'm sure that no members of the House are, are surprised it costs more to live in Canada's north than anywhere else. If they are, I'd suggest they take a trip, take one of your special trips across the country and visit the north and understand the kind of pressures that northerners are living in their communities across the whole north. Then, perhaps, you'll come up 
in your next budget with more than a 10% increase to the Northern Residents tax deduction after 20 years of no increases. Perhaps then you'll understand the importance of supporting the people of the North in their communities right across the North. Until that happens, Mr. Speaker, we aren't going to achieve the kind of sovereignty that we're looking for in the North. Land claims and self-government in the North, so important to move ahead with these files. And, and I point back to the Mulroney government. The Mulroney government did many good things to promote land claims, self-government in the northern regions. They, that attitude, I had hoped some small part of that attitude would exist in this conservative government when it started in power three years ago. Yet what have we seen? I'll give you an example of the Hay River Reserve. The federal government just simply last fall rejected the 14th draft of their proposal for, for, uh, for a comprehensive uh, land claim. They rejected it after negotiating 13 other uh, uh, drafts. They, on the 14th they said, no, that's the end of it. How is that fair to Northerners? Foot dragging at the negotiating table is something that this government seems to be becoming very good at. We need to see progress there. Now, my last point that I'd like to make about the Northwest Passage, speaking directly to it and to the Beaufort Sea on one end of the Northwest Passage, the biggest problem we have with sovereignty is between us and the U.S. on the Alaska-Yukon border. The U.S. has decided unilaterally that they have possession of 21,000 square kilometers of offshore land within the 200 mile limit. Most of that territorial waters lies within the jurisdiction of the Northwest Territories and within Canada. In April of this year, this government put forward a letter to the U.S. stating that they opposed the concept of putting um, the U.S. putting a moratorium on the entire Beaufort Sea area, including the disputed area, the U.S. on August 27th, just after the Prime Minister appeared on a ship off Baffin Island promoting Arctic sovereignty, the U.S. unilaterally put that moratorium in place on Canadian waters. Has this government responded to that challenge? You know, Mr. Speaker, we passed a bill, the Arctic Waters Pollution Prevention Act, uh, last year in Parliament. We did it ostensibly to provide us more control over offshore's waters. What do you think the U.S. is doing with this fishing moratorium? The fishing issues for the U.S. off Alaska in the Chugach Sea and in the Bering Strait, their decision to move ahead with a moratorium on our territorial waters is a direct challenge to Canadian sovereignty. And this government has chosen to remain silent over this. Yes, the U.S. is our trading partner. Yes, it's our best friend. But we, can, we must stand up for ourselves as well in the Beaufort Sea, or we will lose. Mr. Speaker, thank you. That's all I have to say on this matter.